Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Wooden here. Today, we are going to give our ducks the ability to actually eat bread. The bread is not going to last forever. To determine if the bread has some form of quantity, we're going to use hit points just because it's very easy for video game people to understand. It's also an integer, which means a number, so we can decrease it over time. In our bread, our get bread function, we'll add a new property bread here. We'll say bread hit points is three. We've been adding the actual bread inside of the bread slices, but we haven't been giving that to the ducks. We've been giving them kind of this copy object. Since we get the X and Y out of this, we set the bread to it. We'll actually give them the bread because the bread has an X and Y. That's all they care about. And it fulfills the interface or the contract that they're looking for. Something that's a target that has an X and Y. But now knowing that it's bread, they can detect its hit points or if there's any bread left. And if there's none left, they're not going to try to swim for it either. If there's some left, they know they can eat some. So now that we have the bread, we've got the X and Y pulled off of where you clicked and we add it to the bread slices here. We now give the duck the actual bread slice and they all go for the main slice. Logic, we need to change up a bit here. Let's close this so we can get a better view. The actual duck tick is where it thinks. So every X amount of milliseconds per frame it thinks. And what we've done here, if you're not close enough, go ahead and swim towards it. Otherwise you're there, we've reached the bread, go ahead and delete our target and that stops the actual ticking and thinking because there's no target so we don't have to swim anywhere. But we need to change that. We need to say, wait a minute. If the other ducks have got there first, so the hit points of the bread is less than or equal to zero, then there's no point. So let's log that out. No bread left, giving up. So that duck knows if he's two of the unlucky five that doesn't reach the bread in time, he's not gonna eat. So we'll delete his target since there's no point for him to swim anymore and return because we don't wanna run any of this other logic. Assuming there is some bread left, actually has hit points, let's modify this delete here. And we'll log out and say eating bread. And then we'll eat some bread. We'll pass in ourselves and the target that we're trying to eat. And if we go to the get bread function, we'll put a new function below it called eat bread, which takes a duck and a bread slice. Log it out just so we know how many hit points are left. Bread, hit points, bread, hit points. And we'll subtract them each time it's eaten. So it can only be eaten about three times. If you've ever seen ducks eat, they take bigger pieces than they can possibly chew. If bread hit points is less than or equal to zero, then our bread's over with. There's no bread left. And we actually need to physically remove the sprite from the screen. So we'll remove it from the array first to clean up our mess. And we'll say find index using Lodash here. So in our bread slices, we have a bunch of bread slices, which are now our PCJS items rather than an object we had before. The predicate for find is basically if the slice in there is equal to the bread that we've passed in up here, then we found the index. So take that index and in bread slices, remove it using splice here. So remove this index and delete one item at it and that's it, we're not gonna add anything. And then lastly, let's clean up our view mess. So we'll say the bread parent, remove child, so it will no longer show on the screen. So now if we hit save and reload, we have our ducks. If we cook some bread, you'll notice a couple things happen. First, three of them actually reached it and took a bite out of it. So it had three and two and one. The other two missed out because there's no bread left, so they just stopped looking. So now if we click here, you can see again, two reached it. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you enhance the actual tick behavior or thinking behavior based on those targets. We can actually have them inspect other objects, determine properties on them, to take some actions. We can encapsulate the logic of thinking inside of the actual duck tick method, and they can inspect those objects. Conversely, we can pass sprites around because again, they have the X and Y, so they fulfill the contract of X and Y. So rather than getting this object and passing it, we can just keep a hold of the actual pixie objects inside of our bread slices. So although pixie.js contains those containers and manages those for you, there's nothing wrong with you keeping sprites around and managing them yourself if they actually contain data as well. And lastly, we actually give all the ducks the actual bread target. So they actually have another sprite they can target for, for now just X and Y, but they were also using the hit points off of it as well.